What the hell is the Schengen zone, you might ask? Well, you're in the right place because I'm going to tell you. Welcome to another episode of Digital Nomad TV. I'm your hostess, Kristen Wilson, and today we are in Amsterdam in the Netherlands, one of my favorite digital nomad destinations. Make sure to check out my videos on co-working in Amsterdam, as well as Amsterdam as a digital nomad destination. I will link them. So raise your hand if you've ever wanted to travel to Europe, but were super confused about which countries you could go to how long you could stay there, and how all of that works. Me too. So as I was saying, I'm an American here in the Netherlands, which is an EU country in the Schengen zone. And that's what this video is all about. What the hell is the Schengen zone? Who's in it? Who's not in it? And how does it affect you? Just to sum it up, you have your EU member states, your European member states that are in the Schengen, your Schengen zone countries that are not in the EU, your non-Schengen EU countries, your EU non-Schengen countries, your microstates, and countries that are in the EU, not in the Schengen, but might be in the Schengen someday. Sound confusing? Exactly. And many a digital nomad has been stuck at the border or with an immigration agent because they overstayed their welcome. But that's not going to happen to you because I'm going to sum it up for you really quick. So here are the only things you need to know. What the Schengen zone is, which countries are included, how long you can travel there, and a couple other fun facts I'll throw in at the end. Coincidentally, the first time I was in Amsterdam was in 2013, and I thought that I was going to stay a month or so in every European country, but then I realized what the Schengen zone was. The Schengen area was established by the EU in 1995, and it was just basically a way to open up the borders and allow the free flow of goods and people to, of course, boost economic growth. On the pro side, the Schengen zone allows free travel through 22 of the 28 European Union member states, but it doesn't just include European member states. So there are actually 26 total member states in the Schengen area. 22 of them are from Europe. These are Austria, Belgium, Czech Republic, Denmark, Estonia, Finland, France, Germany, Greece, Hungary, Italy, Latvia, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Malta, the Netherlands, Poland, Portugal, Slovakia, Slovenia, Spain and Sweden. Then there are four countries that are not EU member states, but they're still in the Schengen. And those are Iceland, Liechtenstein, Norway, and Switzerland. Then there are a few micro states, and these are the smaller states like San Marino, the Vatican City, Monaco, Andorra. And these are not officially Schengen countries, but they're still basically generally considered part of the Schengen. Three of them, San Marino, Monaco, and the Vatican are considered de facto Schengen states. And then who are those four other stragglers who are entering the Schengen sometime soon? Well, I'm glad you asked because it's Bulgaria, Cyprus, Croatia, and Romania. So what about other EU countries that are not part of the Schengen but are in the EU? Who are these people making everything so difficult? Well, that's the UK, Ireland, Northern Ireland, and the three British Crown dependencies. So this is Guernsey, Jersey, and Isle of Man. Gibraltar, which is also part of Europe, is actually an overseas territory. It's not part of the EU or the Schengen, so it's its own category. So what does it mean for you? Basically, if you're from the US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and other generally considered safe countries like Japan, South Korea, and even throughout Latin America, Mexico, Costa Rica, and I'll link all of the countries below, then you probably don't need a visa to travel for up to 90 days every 180 days in the Schengen zone. Anyone from many parts of Eastern Europe, Africa, the Middle East, and the South Pacific probably need a visa. So to travel within the EU, you need a passport, and you can break up the 90 days over 180 days, or you can have them all consecutively back to back. And it just means that you can only remain within Schengen zone countries 
not Europe, not the EU, but specifically Schengen countries for 90 days total cumulatively per 180 day period. So there are actually some apps that I'll link below that you can put in all of your travel dates and track the days. And that's the easiest way to do it. Now, there's a lot of talk on the internet over who enforces this rule and who doesn't, but in my opinion, it's better to be safe than sorry. There are rumors that some of the Latin countries like Malta and Italy aren't as strict as Germany or the Netherlands, or the UK for that matter, which is a separate thing. But you know, you should still abide by the rules because you don't want to get deported and you don't want to get banned from the EU either or the Schengen zone. So the general rule of thumb is that you can stay in all of those countries that I listed for up to 90 days per 180 days. And then if you want to remain on the continent, but you have run out of time in those Schengen zone countries, then what you could theoretically do is travel to a EU non-Schengen country like the UK or Ireland, or um, another EU member state that is pending Schengen, like Romania, Cyprus, Croatia, Bulgaria, or an Eastern European country that's not in the EU and not in the Schengen, and you can still remain in the general vicinity of Europe. So that's my short explanation of the Schengen zone, what it means, who's included, who's in, who's out. I hope that you guys found this helpful and make sure that you follow the rules for your next Euro trip. That's all for today's episode of Digital Nomad TV. Make sure to come back next week. We're here every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern.